Well, hello everyone. Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. I'm really excited for this episode because I think it's going to serve as a wonderful learning experience for all of you that are trying fruit trees or interested in growing fruit trees. Now, we have had a crazy year this year in Michigan where we've had days that are almost in the 80s and like tonight, it's going to get all the way down into the, uh, into the high 30s. So we've had temperature swings of all different sorts. And so the trees that, uh, that we've planted, they are definitely going through a, a bit of a shock. And the trees are coming out of dormancy as you can see by this beautiful Bartlett pear here. But we also have a tree over here that is the moon glow pear and it's not really coming out of dormancy and we get this we get this question a lot and i want to make a, a video about this because i do think that it's really important to know about the status of your trees so that you don't miss a, a planting window where you can replace a tree if it did die over winter Dying, uh, dying trees over the course of winter is not uncommon, especially when they're newly planted trees. We just planted these last spring, and so this was the first winter that they experienced. Now, for a lot of the people, they immediately assume that if a tree is not budding, if it's not flowering when all the rest are, that it's dead. And it may be dead, but if you pull it out, and it was just late to budding, well then you've definitely killed the tree. So what I want to do is I want to lay down this video as kind of the groundwork to, to let you all know of a super simple, very, very quick test that is free, that is going to give you the immediate status of your tree to know if it's dead or alive. And one of the things that I want you all to do is also understand that different varieties of trees will bud at different times. There's something called chill hours, and the first thing you need to know is Let's say, the bear, let's say this Bartlett pear here, it needs about 600 chill hours. The moon glow pear, it might need something more like 800, uh, 800 chill hours. If you've had a very mild winter, which in our case, it was not very mild, but chill hours are the amount of hours below 40 degrees. If you have uh, a, a, a tree like this Bartlett that only requires 600 chill hours, it's going to put buds on much quicker than a tree that only requires 800 chill hours because there's 200 extra hours put into getting this tree uh, ready to continue its cycle. That is the reset period in which a tree will store, uh, basically keep its energy stored in the roots and after a certain amount of chill hours, it will form buds and then after a certain amount of hours above 40 degrees, it will break buds and that's what we consider the kind of the flowering stage of a tree. And so uh, that's what you really need to know first is, are the varieties that are not flowering, are they requiring more chill hours? If so, you might just need to be patient, but you can still apply this test even if, you, uh, even if you're unsure if the, uh, if the tree is, is dead or alive because it's not going to harm the tree in the least. So let's go head over to this tree over here and uh, let's, show, let's go check out together the status of this moon glow pear here because I'm curious myself because it's definitely not as far along as this Bartlett here. So let's go. So the first thing that you want to do when you're inspecting your tree for signs that it may have died is you want to check the buds. This plant, this tree here did produce buds as you can see and these buds are kind of a reddish brown color. Now see, that would be, nor that would be uh, normal when it's first forming buds. But the buds that are on here, they were formed uh, probably in, in December sometime. So these buds here, uh, you know, late December, early January, so these buds have been like this for quite a long time. Another thing you wanna check is, are they dry? Are they brittle looking? See, they don't look, they don't look very dry, but they do, uh, this one right here looks pretty dry. So if I take this one, you can see, yeah, it's pretty dry. It peeled right off there, and it, um, it doesn't have a whole lot of, of uh, moisture left in it. It looks like it's been a little bit of frost, it looks like it's been frostbitten. And that, that can happen in very cold weather. That's usually the, the thing that kills it is the very cold weather, because they just don't have a very established root system deep down in the soil that can escape that permafrost layer. And when you have a super cold winter like what we had, even a cold hardy pear like this that can survive zone three weather can die in zone 5B, um, which is where we're at. So zone six, zone 5B. So it's definitely not, you know, it's not uncommon. It's happened a lot. So um, these are things you look for. I'm still not sure yet if it's dead or not. Another thing you can do is a bend test. If you bend it, right? If you take, hold the, hold the branch right here, take the top and bend it down to a 90 degree right? If you bend it down to 90 degree and it doesn't break or you don't hear any cracking, 
That means that, uh, that there is still moisture in the branches. That's a good sign. You, if it breaks, it just snaps like a twig. It means there's no moisture left in the tree and it's probably dead. Mine here, I can get it almost to about a complete 90 degree angle. And you want to start with branches that are very, uh, that are very new branches. You, can, you don't want to do it with a, with a thick branch because there's not a whole, that's, that's been um, more mature and it's not as, it's not as limber. So do this with younger branches. Younger branches are a little more reddish in color. The, the older branches are gonna be a little gray or they have bark on them. Don't try it with that. That'll give you a false positive for a dead tree. And it might not actually be dead yet. So uh, another thing is, is you can take your fingernail. This is called a scratch test. All right, so you wanna go about two thirds of the way up the tree where it's got some pretty good mature bark here. And what you wanna do is you want to scratch with your nail just the cambium layer. The cambium layer is the outer layer. So you have the bark, and then just inside of that, you have the cambium layer. The cambium layer, if the tree is alive, should be a light green. As you can see there, the cambium layer is green. That means there's still moisture in these branches, there's still hope for this tree, and it may just be very late to budding, which is a very good possibility with how crazy the weather has been. So until this changes, I'm going to allow it enough time to put out buds. It may still die. There might, be enough, there might not be enough energy to push buds. That might be the problem. A lot of times trees, will, uh, they'll, have enough to, they'll have enough life in them to keep moisture going up into the tree. The capillary action is getting moisture up there. Um, and that moisture is water, but there's also sugars that the, that the tree has stored through photosynthesis from last year. So it might be enough to keep the tree at least in a dormant state, but not enough to push out of dormancy. So I hope you all enjoyed, I hope you learned something new, and I really do hope that if you did lose a fruit tree this year, or, uh, or you, you lost several fruit trees this year, that you are not discouraged to keep trying. It is a reality for us as, as fruit tree growers, you're going to lose one, you might even lose them all. In fact, we knew a fruit tree farmer up uh, just north of us that had a couple acres of, of fully established peach trees that he bought on his property. He acquired them from uh, a gentleman that had a, an orchard that he was just kind of selling the business off and he thought it'd be a great idea to take up this business. And the next year, we had the coldest winter on record and, we actually, and he actually lost all of his fruit trees. And that was the main reason why he bought the property. So it just goes to serve as, a, as an example of that, you know, if you lost one tree but you have seven left, Consider yourself lucky because there are definitely people far worse off and it's something that you're at, least, uh, you're at least able to learn from this experience. Maybe not pick that variety. Maybe it was too tender a variety or maybe the location might have been a little bit too harsh. You know, one of the things that uh, if this tree, if that uh, moon glow pear doesn't survive, one of the things that it might tell me is that maybe this little, uh, this little location here where this Bartlett pear is, is ideal for a pear because it's closer to the house. It creates a little more of a microclimate. It's not out in the open uh, where it can face all the cold elements blowing at it at uh, full force. The house acts as a little bit of a windbreak yet, yet allows the, the tree to have still access to full sun. And so that might not be an ideal location. You know, those are always things that as fruit tree growers, um, or as even as gardeners, we, we have to look at and assess year to year the results and see what we can do differently and, and through trial and error, get to a better result. So I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. As always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home, grow some fruit trees because they are super awesome. And we'll see you all tomorrow on the next episode. Catch you later. See ya.